Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today, I got a little shop modification. As a matter of fact, um, I've got three or four shop modifications that I need to get done here in the shop, and we're gonna do those over the course of the next month or so. Um, I've been super busy here in the shop. Now I'm all caught up, and it gives me a chance to have, uh, get these projects done. So the first one we're gonna be doing right here is I'm standing in front of the Kent 1340, and I've recently acquired uh, four more 40 position tool holders from Pee Wee Tools. Uh, Peter Wentz is a great guy to work with. Uh, he's the owner of Pee Wee Tools. He's over in Germany. And uh, a couple of years ago, I ordered a set of four and I love them and I needed more. And so I just, uh, earlier this year, I had ordered four more and they just came in. It took about six months for them to get here. Uh, you know, with uh, material and such and so forth back uh, uh, in Germany, it just took a long time for them to get here, but they finally got here and now I have eight of them. And so what I want to do is I've currently got them sitting right here on top of the lathe head right here. And this is, this is, this is not where I want to keep them. Uh, Adam Booth with A-Bomb 79 uh, has got a, on his Precision Matthews, he had made a shelf right on the very top right here, all the way across, uh, specifically for his tool holders. And I thought that was a marvelous idea. As a matter of fact, I liked it so much as that's what I want to do here on top of the 1340. Uh, so I've got about an inch and a quarter wide piece of uh, metal that this, this backsplash comes up and curls over, and this is where I want to put this shelf. Uh, here's the situation though. Ideally, it would be way easy for me to make something like this and mount it to the back side because this is just straight down. It'd be a perfect scenario. However, I can't move this lathe. I don't have the equipment to move it. It weighs several thousand pounds and it's just not going to be something that I can just simply move out of the way to get behind there to put that on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to tackle it from the front side right here. The game plan is for me to uh, drill and I don't think I'm going to tap because it's fairly thin so I think I'm going to use bolts, so uh, countersink bolts and I'm just going to like quarter 20s or something like that and I'm going to go through the top maybe in four locations and hopefully that secures it enough that it's going to be uh, not going to go anywhere. If it's not, then I'm going to have to make some sort of L bracket from the front side that's going to go down and mount to this right here. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, I'm thinking some eighth inch material, eighth inch sheet metal would be a good start. I'm thinking six inches wide, maybe 40, 48 inches long. And uh, that's my that's my thought. Uh, we'll put a back on it. We'll put some sides on it, and a very small lip in the very front. I just don't want these things falling off this way. And so. That's the game plan, so let's snoop around the shop and see what we got for material and get started on this project. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so I got all kinds of miscellaneous drops here around the shop. I'm over here by my plasma table, and you can see I'm measuring. I'm just trying to find the right size and utilize the right material here. And then on the side of my house, I've got some more over here. And then this piece right here, like 43 inches long, it's about eight or 10 inches wide. And this piece here is the one piece that'll work. I utilize most of it and not too much waste. You see, it's got a little bit of rust to it, but that's okay. Now we'll get that cleaned off. All right, I got the dimension, I believe it's like six inches, and I'm gonna use this piece right here and clamp it down to the welding table. And I'm gonna use the Evolution metal cutting saw right here. You know, this thing right here is, is, is <laughs> it works really good, man, I'm telling you, especially for something like this. You can see how easily it cuts this. The only downfall with metal cutting saws, or at least this one, is it chips are everywhere. It's all over the place. Uh, some metal cutting saws have, have like guards in them or, or, or chip catchers. I don't know, this one doesn't, but nevertheless, works really good. All right, taking the rust off here. You can see I got my fan set up there for all you haters that uh, think I should be wearing a respirator, and I'm sure probably should be, 
But uh, that fan is just blowing that rust right out the door right there. One thing I want to point out again, I mentioned this in one of my videos back. This is a Forne grinder right there. I've got that at my local metal supply store, and i got to tell you something. I have a lot of grinders and a lot of different manufacturers, and this one was relatively inexpensive. I think it was like $65 or something. But this thing's variable speed and a perfect scenario. That thing really works well. All right, with all the rust off here, you can see I've got uh, some flat bar stock. i got a chunk of half inch and a chunk of inch and a half probably. And uh, just cutting everything to length on the porter band. Yeah, I don't have a bandsaw here in the shop, and so uh, the porter band, it works pretty good. All right, I'm test fitting everything here. I got my backsplash here, and I got the front piece on the front. And then I'm just marking the angle. I'm just going to cut an angle piece uh, uh, on either side. And I go from the front to the back right there. Back over to the porter band, you know. The thing about this is it works pretty good. I have a five inch throat. You can see I can't get through all the way right there, but uh, over the years just learning because I don't have anything else. I've got this, I've learned how to get around stuff like that. So just like that, you can see I had to flip it around and uh, get it so that piece goes out the side of the porter band there, but everything works really good. And just like that, I got my two angle pieces. All right, it's assembly time right here. And a couple of mini, mini mags right here. Mag squares. I mentioned this many times before. These things are handy. I've got a lot of bigger ones, and these are my small ones. Picked them up off of Amazon. All right, I got everything securely clamped down on my welding table. Now, one thing I don't want to do, and you guys know, you put a lot of heat into something like this, it's going to probably warp. And so, there's no really need to do any other uh, welding other than just some some pretty hefty tacks right here. And that's all I'm doing right there. Uh, this is nothing structural. This thing's not going to go anywhere it's not supporting anything so just something to hold it together is all i'm looking for right here you know I, and i didn't want to get carried away with a bunch of big welds in the front right here so uh this is what i come up with and this is going to work out pretty good i'm hoping all right the side piece is right there just a couple bump tacks and this thing's starting to take shape all right, a little bit of a test fit right here. Let's see. Okay, I kind of like it. Uh, that's working out pretty good. I wish it was just a couple of inches longer. I would like it to have gone the full length, but that's okay. Hey, they'll utilize the pieces I have in the shop. All right, laying out the inside here, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill about four or five holes in here, a couple inches or so from either end, and then make the distance uh, and divide that up evenly. I forget the probably nine inches. I think they're around nine inches apart or ten inches apart or something like that in between those the other two on either end. All right, and then uh, I'm trying to go through here and figure out uh, what size hole and how this is going to work. You know these champion cutting uh, champion drill bits, these brute drill bits, man. I love these things. They're super sharp work really good it's got a nice little holder i've got a couple of sets of these things pretty handy all right i'm going through the drill sizes right here trying to figure out the right size and the right combination with the countersink to be sure everything is going to work the way i want it to and you know just getting the right depth of the countersink right here and i think i finally after a lot of testing i finally figured it out and now i'm ready to move forward and get the rest of these things drilled out and countersunk you know, it was a little strategically uh, designed to place so you can see the holes aren't right exactly in the middle. And that's because I wanted it offset a certain distance from the back and in the front. And they needed to line up exactly on that uh, inch and a quarter rib that's on the top of the lathe there. All right, let's run over and uh, get this thing temporarily mounted to be sure everything is going to work the way it's supposed to. Once I got it right there, very carefully drilled that hole uh, without moving things around. And that's one end, and then this end right here. And even just with the, uh, I, I wanna say just with the two bolts right here, uh, it felt pretty secure. Uh, and uh, so I knew I was gonna be pretty good with this and I wasn't gonna have to put any kind of L brackets in there. Now adding three more, I knew it was, uh, I knew it was going to work out just the way I wanted it to. You can see those bolts are nice and countersunk below the surface. Of course, we don't want those things sticking up. 
And then once I got everything, I really like it. Nice and secure. Now, disassemble everything. And get a little paint on it. And the paint of choice here is some, I think it was granite. You know, this is a, this is the color I had that's the closest match to the lid. I didn't go match any color match or, or you know, search for something. This is just something I had in the shop that was close, and uh, I was happy with it. It was close enough to uh, look like it was part of the lathe. This is some uh, toolbox uh, liner material picked up at the uh, Home Depot, and, uh, you know, the... <laughs> 48 inches long wow perfect uh you know my shelf i think was 43 something like that and this is all i'm looking for i'm just looking for some sort of a liner on the inside to just give it a little little something a little grip you know make it maybe look finished all right assembly time back in there and you can see that paint's fairly close i mean it's gonna be close enough You know, I gotta say, this really worked out well. This was, uh, I'm very, I was very pleased with the uh, the outcome here of this project. It uh, it served its purpose nicely. A little bit of glue on there. I happen to have some Gorilla Glue. That's what I use here. A couple of dabs right there, and that piece fit right in there just like that. And cover those welds up nicely, and just like that, perfect setup right there. I'm very happy with this turned out. You know, thanks for following me along on this uh, on this journey on uh, shop modifications. There'll be a few other videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.